Welcome to another Lumion live stream tutorial. This is Chris Walton from C. Walton Design. And this tutorial is going to cover five simple camera movements that can add professionalism and a more cinematic feel and approach to your Lumion animations. Just something that can take it to the next level of, of realism and get the most out of your scene and all the work you put into your project. The best place to showcase them. For a, for a long time, I've noticed um, I've noticed certain camera movements professionals were using that I started copying years ago, and only just recently have gotten names or what some of these movements were. And so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to share some real basic camera movements, their names, how they're used, and how they're accomplished here in Lumion. Maybe even a little bit of how these things are approached in real life. As I've been studying and learning more videography, recording things in real life, I've gained, I've gained a much better appreciation for all these things I've been able to do in Lumion just by two mouse button clicks, whereas so much equipment can be involved in some of these movements. So we'll give some appreciation there, and hopefully these things will help you guys out, especially those who are basic or just uh, less... The basic users who aren't super confident in your... your your camera animation in movement. It's pretty tricky. It's not very intuitive. A lot of people default to some settings or default to some movements that are not very good, which we'll show an example of here. And hopefully this is these add to a, your toolbox of things to, to grab when you're not feeling very creative or confident or just need to get an animation done. Just be able to pull some of these out and lean on them should help immensely in, in some of the projects we have to do where just a lot of our creativity is already drained by the time it takes to add those camera paths. So we're going to start off with number one, which is kind of a straight pull, a straight pull, straight push. It's kind of reversed. And so jumping here to some examples I've done, this is uh, an interior shot. I'm going to Utilize as an example and also an exterior one. As you see, the camera is just focused on one point and it's just pulling straight back, nice and smooth. And of course, there's the opposite where we can also do a, uh, a push in, you know, really, really deep there, being able to uh, do the opposite of pulling and push out. It's some of the simplest movement, but it really adds so much depth to uh, to a scene when utilized right. So, again, just the steps of creating something like this, we can start right here, create one keyframe, pull back here. And guys, when we create some of these camera movements, I often call them B-roll. The we want as few keyframes as possible. We don't want too many. Lumion's camera can kind of go a little wonky. We want these as simple as possible. And another thing here is we want to make sure the duration's a little bit longer than what's default. Because these things are often done too fast and you can't slow them down in post. You can go too slow and potentially speed up, which is rare. It's, it never seems to be slow enough. But that's how this is accomplished here. Very straightforward and simple. And of course, you could do the opposite. Each scene or whatever you're looking at is different. You could say, for example, we're focusing on something right here, maybe the gentleman in there, and giving context to it. Or we're coming out and then we're focusing in on something we're supposed to see and highlight. So that's step number one, super simple, straight pull. So number two is the slide pan. So this is one of my favorites, going back to some examples here, where the camera is just coming right to the side. Just pulling the side, sometimes you can move a lot of distance, sometimes you can move just a little bit. Just adding a little bit of motion, and instead of just going from side to side, we could also try just going up and down. Look how the camera is not turning at all, it's, it's kept straight. It's kept straight in that same that same direction. We can go ahead and create something like this 
in this scene here, coming in, maybe even have the horizontal eye level set up here. Slide, create number keyframe number two, slow it down. Let's just do 10 by default. It's always a pretty decent speed. And we're accomplishing this. Now, something like this is achieved in real life by actually having a sort of track that the camera is moved across to get that perfect smoothness. Sometimes people can hold gimbals and try to walk and keep that nice and smooth, or they just hold it themselves. Or you get to the fancy equipment, which are motorized sliders that you know cost a lot of money to get that perfect and refined, even timing in between each one. We used to do it in two mouse clicks in Lumion. We're really spoiled, but it's a really powerful move that really, it's almost like you're sitting on a ride and you just take that time to focus and appreciate the detail. There's not too much being thrown at us. It's the same elevation, that same facade there that we have ample time to just appreciate. There's plenty of other things that combine with this too. Any other sort of movement or lighting change or our subject that's coming into the shot. There's really, it just is a blank canvas to start from. Hopefully it gets you guys as creative juices going as you're developing this in your shots. Play, play with these in several spots and you'll, maybe you'll start to see some really cool things uh, start to develop. So moving on to number three is the crane. It could be crane up in this case here where the camera is sitting on a tripod and Usually you'd have something like a fluid head with a handle where they're just tilting these uh, the camera up and down or left to right and rotating with some nice friction to get it nice and even. Again, in the real world, it's it's really hard. It takes you know the hand of a, a master to be able to do this to get a really good even look. And yet in Lumion, our software is doing it for us. So again, this is. We can pretend in our scene here, we're standing right in this corner. We have a tripod set up and we want to unveil the pool. But we're gonna start by just kind of looking down and pulling up to right about there. Slow it down. And I might be spending a little bit too much time looking at the ground here, but that's sort of the idea. Of course, we could do it something like this, where we just do a pan across uh, the crane. It's just like, an, like a bird just sitting there looking to the left and right. It's a great way of slowly introducing more detail and guiding the camera from a, from a first-person view. Obviously, people don't typically walk sideways. This one gives us kind of a surreal look because people don't walk sideways evenly like that. But people do stand and look around with their neck. So that's the crane. And step number four is, is essentially a combination of a couple of these things. Really, you get into infinite combinations and possibilities with some of these movements. I'm just trying to keep it simple. But the next one is just a crane and pan where we're starting to crane up and instead of just going down to up or left to right, we're going kind of a diagonal direction. We can start up high, which I really like how this looks. We're focused on the trees and then we go into the house. It really kind of gives context to where this is at. And if we were to do this in our scene, we could do some really interesting combinations. I can try to copy that here. Pretend the sun isn't sitting right there. Just move that way. Of course, we want to slow this down, but I'll play this here. We can do something like this. We can even combine it with a pan where we start looking down. We slide down and look up. You see the combinations are, are pretty much endless. One thing I thought was kind of cool too is when you kind of dolly forward or you do that step pull or push here. We're gonna push, we're gonna push in. And 
and then kind of look up. Really gives a dynamic shot, especially for focusing on the pool or things going on down there. Some really cool angles. The basics here. We're just touching the basics. You see something else you want to add or move to the side, go for it. This is, this is the building blocks of a great animation. Made easy. So now it moves on to our last step, which is a focus pull. Now this is kind of an artistic approach that is, they're great, don't overuse it. Sometimes people try to overuse these things or they try to do it and it, they don't, it comes across as kind of corny. But when done correctly, it can create a really beautiful shot. Obviously, I'm going to loop that again. When we're, um, let's see, when, so whenever we use depth of field in real life or in animation, we're trying to isolate something. We're isolating our subject. In this case, we're looking at the, the flowers and then revealing the house. It's just kind of a cool way of, of g gaining interest. And in this way, we're focusing on the room. As it comes into focus, it just gets us, it grabs our attention. And when it comes into clarity, it just kind of feels good that we can see it. So this is one of the only ones that is done with an, the use of an effect. So let's try something here where we're just going to basically pan from here to here. And let's pretend this is, oh, there's a cool staircase there, but let's just pretend this is really interesting right here with people or lights. So this is pretty cool. It's a good pan shot here, good sliding shot. And then we can add the depth of field effect. Now we can use this autofocus or we just do focal distance. It's up to you. So I'm going to set it to background, change that focal distance. So it's just behind what we're looking at. All right, so I'm going to create a keyframe for a amount, high amount here, and then maybe somewhere around here we resolve it. Now, technically, the focus pull, we technically should be moving the focal distance, but I haven't gotten that to look really good in natural in Lumion, so I just go with the amount. So I'm actually going to up that a little bit. So. That way we're focused on here. It's kind of a cool, interesting wall. And then the real interesting thing kind of pops in the back. Now, there's so many ways of utilizing this and I'm probably not doing that great of a job of explaining this, but please do play with it. Get some ideas, try some of these movements. You know, again, just to go and review, that was the last one of these basics. We have straight pull, or push, depending on which direction we go. We have the slide, pan across. We have crane, craning up, crane to the left. Again, the slower the better. If you need to speed it up, that's easy enough if you're doing post, but if you ever need to slow it down, you're gonna have to re-render it. Crane and pan. And there's the focus pull again. All right, guys. Well, that about covers it for these at five camera movements that you guys can add to improve your shots. Please, I'd love to see any examples or questions that you guys have regarding this. Uh, thanks for watching so much. I actually have some more advanced, advanced ones coming soon. Um, that maybe some of the intermediate and advanced users might find, get some extra use out of, some pretty cool drone angles or other things to gain interest if these are these basic ones are too, uh, too boring for you guys. That'll be coming soon. So thanks for watching. Subscribe for more, for more content like this. And until next time, guys. Thank you.